Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolfer Programming. You know, the other day I heard some news that Google was going to phase out Chrome OS and shift more into Android for their laptops and maybe even their desktops because they have, they did, they did used to make Chrome OS desktops. I don't know if they still do. I thought this was really interesting because, you know, Android does have a desktop mode, but it's not enabled. It's more like a developer thing. And Samsung has shipped that code into their own desktop called Dex. I think a few other manufacturers have something similar. But I wanted to give it a try, so I ordered um, I ordered a Samsung uh, Galaxy X Cover 6 Pro, which I got because, well, even though it's $600 new, you can get it in the $200 range on eBay. I think I actually got it for like $210. They seem to be up a couple of dollars. Um, basically brand new. I mean, it had an open box, but it, I don't know where these are coming from, but they're very cheap and it's it's a powerful phone. And another thing I like about it is that it has a, uh, here it is right here, is that it has a SD card slot and it has a removable battery, which is awesome. And I actually have a extra battery right here so I can swap it off, swap it out whenever. And this has Dex mode. And actually what you're seeing here is Samsung Dex. This is a desktop setting <laughs> for Android. And, and, and you know, it's really, really cool. It, um, it can do most things that you need. Now, Android is not, is, you know, it, it's got a lot of security stuff built into it. So it's, it's hard to do developer stuff. It's hard to program, but it does have term ukes that, you know, a lot of people use. And here I can actually, you know, I can actually SSH over to my Raspberry Pis and I can start, you know, start and stop containers. I can go over to my other um, server and start containers and it's great. I can, I can even do this over a VPN. So I can log into my home VPN um, with WireGuard on my phone, SSH in over localhost uh, if you don't want to open up an SSH port and I can sit there and edit all my, you know, home hosting stuff, which is great. It's great. So it does a lot of cool things. And, and uh, you know, I think, I think it's going to be really interesting to see. I think the reason they haven't done this before, like why all phones don't have a desktop mode and why they haven't been pushing it. Well, there's, there's a couple of reasons. One, you know, I think they're worried it's going to cannibalize their, their um, Chrome OS sales, their laptop sales, because, a lot of people spend a thousand dollars or more on their phone. It's a really powerful device, and it really has enough power to do everything. But if you <laughs> if you put everything into your phone, then why would people buy your tablet or your or your um, you know laptop? They don't. And I think I think the technology is there where that that really is where we should go. And you know, back in the day. Nintendo had a similar worry because they sold the 3DS, the um, basically Game Boy line, and then they had their, you know, their um, Nintendo GameCube, um, and they they and their Wii U, and they were worried that if they did a mobile device, then well, it's going to kill off their, you know, it's they're they're going to basically half their business. But what ended up happening when they made the Switch was they basically had twice as much business for all of it. So it was a really good thing for Nintendo, and I think that's what. Well, Google here is finally realizing that um, having a phone that can do everything is going to be is is going to just make the Google brand and the Android brand look better. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited. This is actually what Linux Phone wanted to be when it you know when Mark Shuttleworth first you know announced his plan to make an Ubuntu phone. He wanted to have a phone that you would just plug up and ready to go be ready to go like that's your main computer a lot, a lot of really nice things about that like you don't need a cloud password manager for example as much you can just have a local one on your phone because that is your main computer and you carry it around everywhere it's not perfect like a lot of people when they plug up their computer they want to take it with them when they walk away maybe to go to the bathroom for a second and unplugging it is it's really a jarring experience so i think i think this is this might be um, the way things go in the future, if we get really good wireless video connectivity, um, but but already it's pretty awesome. So 
Um, we're going to wrap this up, and I'm just going to show a couple games I found out that um, I've never been much of an Android gamer, um, but Android games, a lot of them have uh, gamepad support. <laughs> and so we're going to take a look at a couple of them here. We got, um, you know, I found Minecraft was only $8 in the Android store, and it was like $20 everywhere else. And so here I got that keyboard. Keeps up. Um, but yeah, it's only $8, and it's the Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and it's like the exact same edition that you would get on PlayStation or an Xbox or in the Microsoft store. You can even get this thrown on Linux, and this thing, this actually has some of the best... Uh, game controller support of any <laughs> any Android game that I've found because like from beginning to end you can control it with the controller a lot of the other games that I've tried you still have to click around a little bit so you need a mouse plugged up because it's expecting a touch screen but no Minecraft is 100% controllable with the gamepad and it's like the full version and another benefit about Minecraft for uh, for Google Play versus like the Switch is that you don't have to pay a monthly service fee to play online, right? So with Nintendo, I think it's like $4 a month. PlayStation, it's like 11 or something. I don't know how much the other platforms are, but Minecraft is completely free to play online and it's cross-platform. You can play with PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, Windows editions, it is the same exact edition. It's just a pocket version of Minecraft. So I was really surprised that this is, not only is it the cheapest ver version of Minecraft, but um, it's the full version of Minecraft and it's better than like the Nintendo Switch version for a lot of reasons. Um, what else do we have here? I was also really surprised at how awesome um, Call of Duty Mobile was, so. It, uh, it doesn't really have any kind of storyline to it. It's just online play, but like not many people really play the campaign for Call of Duty. I did notice that the PlayStation 5 controller, the mouse cursor actually works. And so you can actually use a PlayStation 5 controller to click your way around. It's probably the best Android controller for that reason. I just like the Xbox controller. See, here we have Call of Duty running on a cell phone in desktop mode with a controller, full screen support. And it's awesome. I feel like I'm the only person that throws smoke grenades. See, the players aren't very good. I guess you get a lot of kids on the Android version. I normally don't slay anywhere near this good in Call of Duty. So just get a bunch of... So I think they're actually spawning right there. This is, this is almost cool. Yeah, I was, I was surprised at how good it is. A lot of Android games I've noticed, they just seem to be like pieces of the PC and console versions, like just kind of taped together. Okay, killed by a train. But yes, that is Call of Duty Mobile. Let's take a look at another game.
So I used to play a lot of Devil May Cry when I was a kid. And I was surprised to see there is a Devil May Cry mobile. And this one, yeah, it's it's kind of a mess. Um, you kind of start like full powered uh, with all your powers and then you just kind of, I don't know. There's no really story. You just kind of go from room to room killing demons. But it has controller support. Feels kind of like a PlayStation 2 game. No story, just hop in and start killing things. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's also take a look um, at Diablo Immortal. So this is a fairly high budget video game and it does seem to have story to it. I haven't actually got into playing it. Honestly, the last Diablo game I played a lot was Diablo 2. <laughs> this is that game that basically infuriated all the PC gamers. <laughs> you guys don't have phones? But uh one of the advantages I've noticed of Android games is it seems like there's a few people who just spend a lot of money on Android games only for extra stuff. And you can generally play most of these things for free, though. It's just there's a couple power players out there, I guess, who spend hundreds of dollars a month on their Android game. I don't know. I don't have that kind of addiction. Yeah, I mean, the frame rate feels kind of low. Not sure what the hit button is. Looks like that's it. Yeah. I think I have a PlayStation controller. That's interesting. It must be connected in the other room. So yeah, I think it's a really cool concept, even just as a gaming machine, just hooking up your phone to the TV, picking up a controller, and going at it. Like, And you know, for 200 bucks, this is a competitive game system, right? Like... <laughs> I think for a lot of people, having Android as your main computer, it's going to work. I mean, it's only a matter of time. And it probably would have been done before, except it's just kind of hard to monetize it because, you know, Samsung, Apple, they sell computers. So they don't want to cannibalize their computer sales by making their phones do everything a computer does. But at this point, they're powerful enough. Like, they already do everything. You can play games, you can edit documents, you can browse the web. Most of that stuff you do anyway. Why not hook it up to the big screen and do it? So yeah, I think it's a really cool idea. I'm glad Google's moving in that direction because I think, well, first they're going to put Android on their laptops. And then there's going to be no reason not to just use your phone instead of your laptop. So, like, 
you know, we have already those these little lap decks, these little laptop conversion kits that turn your phones into computers. The problem with them is that they're like they're pretty expensive. When a used laptop is, you know, like 200 bucks, really, you can get a really nice laptop for 200 bucks used on Facebook Marketplace or something or something like that. So that's it, everyone. Um, that's all I got for today. What do you think? Is Dex Android desktop the future? Are we going to get rid of our laptops and we're just going to carry phones around? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.